for decades, the Corvette has been the pinnacle of the American sports car. And even rock stars like Bon Jovi and astronauts like Alan Shepard, this has been the car of choice for them. But with this drastic push for EVs that all the manufacturers seem to be going for, have we seen the last of the internal combustion engine? Cadillac has claimed that the CT4 and CT5 are their swan song. No more after those. Even the US's best-selling vehicle, the F-150, is going all electric next year. What sort of technological advancements are gonna happen next? And with all of that technology going on, I, have we missed it? Are, are we way beyond where we can have just a fun, simple driver's car? This is a 1988 Chevrolet Corvette Z52 with a spectacular classic two-tone paint job, a modest 245 horsepower and 340 foot-pounds of torque, automatic transmission, simple, straightforward sports car, a driver's car. That, on the other hand, is not. <laughs> I was talking about the lack of technology and the amount of driver engagement that you get out of the classic Corvette. Well, that thing's as old as you are. This, this is the future. Yeah. 6.2 liter V8 in the back. Right. Where some would say God intended it to be. <laughs> uh, let's see, 490 horsepower, 465 pound-feet of torque, zero to 60 in under three seconds, if done just right. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm in love with this one and I don't want to give it back. Rapid blue. Yes. Spectacular. With, with the contrasting interior. So you've got two-tone over there. I've got a little bit of two-tone going on too. <laughs> uh, this thing is spectacular uh it's nuts uh, to say the least and yeah i'm not giving this one back this one this one's staying with me are you sure you don't want to give it back after that price tag I, i'm going on the run matt <laughs> <laughs> this thing is uh gorgeous and i love it it is spectacular so. i would argue that that's more fun to drive well uh there's only one way to figure that one out <laughs> heads if you wouldn't mind hit that subscribe button down below so that you don't miss a future review from us and ring that bell so you get notified every time we post and if you want to know some behind the scenes of what we're doing maybe what we're driving next check us out on facebook and instagram both at gt garage talk and everything can be found at gtgaragetalk.com we just want to give a huge thank you to our friends over at Mercedes-Benz of Tyler. You can check out their entire inventory, both new and pre-owned, at the link down in the description below. Huge thanks to our friends at One Off Productions for not only shooting, but producing this video review. Hey gearheads, welcome to Garage Shock. I'm Corey. And I'm Matt. And this is the 2021 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray convertible in this gorgeous rapid blue. Yeah, and this is a proper Corvette, a proper sports car with the engine where it's supposed to be and the simplicity that is the 1988 Corvette C4 Z52. All right, Matt, that Corvette is as old as you are and shows it in some of its uh, technology features or lack thereof. So Absolutely. Uh, let's start off with uh, <laughs> headlights. Yeah. I've got LED headlights. I, I don't even I don't even see headlights on yours. That's where right. where are they? Uh, mine are better. Pop up up and down headlights. Yep. Very nice. With with but, little uh, with little gnomes beating around on the inside <laughs> in there. Making making sure they're in the proper position. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, let's see. I mentioned mine is a convertible. The uh, top goes back 
automatically with the push of a button. Right. How, how do you get the roof off of that thing? Uh, it takes a minute or two. Yeah, and maybe. some wrenches and okay. a buddy. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned the engine is in the front. This yeah. famously has switched to mid-engine format. So right. uh, I've got a 6.2 liter V8 back here, 490 horsepower, 465 pound-feet of torque. I've got a classic 350. Okay. Uh, 245 horsepower, about 360 foot-pounds of torque in this one. Um, automatic, backing it up. Yeah. What have you got? Uh, automatic, dual clutch, eight speed. Yeah, but mine has a shifter. Yeah, my, mine has buttons Meh. and levers. Stupid buttons. So we, we can bicker back and forth, but right. I, I think what will settle this all why don't we fire them up and see the audio test? Which one really sounds better? Deal. I'll let you go first. Oh, Save the oh, best man. for last. All right, gearheads, 2021 C8 Corvette, the pinnacle of what technology and power can do. <laughs> Let's go. So we've got multiple drive modes here. Let's see, we'll start at the beginning. Uh, first is weather, uh, so helps, you know, when things get a little bit slippery. We've got my mode, completely customizable. You've got tour, which is probably the most comfortable setting for cruising around. And you've got sport, changes things up just a little bit. And then track, which is where you would want to have it on the track. So Eric, what is this fine automobile you have brought us today? This is something I'm loaning from my buddy Jeff. This is a 1988 Corvette. as a Z52 pack, two-tone. Uh, it's either, all the parts are either original or refurbished original with the exception of the rear exhaust tips. <laughs> okay. Matt often claims that Chevrolet and General Motors have lost their way and they don't make anything exciting. Exhibit A to the contrary. This thing is amazing. 6.2 liter V8 back behind you. A Chevrolet first for the Corvette. Uh, very controversial step in its own right. It really is a clean looking car. It is. Um, he plans on keeping it all original and just get stuff refurbished or refinished. Uh, I believe it's a four-speed, three-drive gears with a single overdrive, standard General Motors transmission of the era. Classic 350. Classic 350. It's a 5.7. It's two port injected. Uh, the C4 had three different versions of uh, injectors, but this is the most up-to-date version before they went to the C5, which is the two port injection. Okay, okay. Uh, the C4 that Matt is currently riding in has round taillights, and that was like the hallmark and Chevrolet stepped away from the round tail lights uh, progressively. C5, C6, C7, they just completely gave up on the round tail lights altogether. And then C8, you, you get what we've got here in that pinchy, uh, wide, arrow type design. That's a fantastic specimen, I love it. And, and I love the simplicity, even with as much uh, of uh, you know the full digital gauge that he's had beautifully restored, uh, the fun little gadgets and gizmos, you know, the, the window controls being here in the center console. Even with all those things, the simplicity of this vehicle, the straightforwardness of just 350 automatic, two-seater, simple, straightforward car, and I love it. I just love it. Let's give her a rip. Let's do it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, man. Let's give it a little bit of beans. But I mean, there's not, there's no dash cracks on it. It's there's some plastic parts that are, you know, standard General Motors affair. Same stuff you find in the, you know, the, the Camaros of the, the era. Really, any vehicle of the era, it's just hard plastic and it gives out. Right. But mechanically, it's very well put together. As you can feel, first gear in these vehicles is more like a warm-up gear, and it really gets its legs. Oh, man. After once you get into second gear, it just it came alive for sure. Yeah. Uh, they ditched the pop-up headlights with the C6. They ditched the round taillights with the C7. They uh, ditched the front engine with the C8. And there's rumors that there is a fully electric version coming. So they're even itching to ditch the V8 engine altogether. But I would argue that this, as of right now, is the pinnacle of what General Motors can do and is proof that they are still a fun company when they are allowed to be. It's a fantastic vehicle. It's more of a go-kart yeah. than a car, <laughs> which is the best part about it. Oh, yeah. The turn-in in this is unbelievable. Having all that extra weight back behind you, where probably some would say it should be, is uh, very favorable in the driving dynamics. And uh, this thing, <laughs> it just blows my mind how fun it is. And then you add on top of it the looks that come with putting the engine back behind you. It's insane. It truly makes this thing a, an American hypercar, supercar, whatever you want to call it. It's unbelievable. The looks that you get, especially driving around in this rapid blue uh, with the top down and my red hair flowing. This thing is a stunner. I've used two hands. Coolant temperature and oil temperature look fun. So, all displayed right there in front of you. You can see what all you need to see. <laughs> oh, man. And you can flip between different settings. So, if I want to look at my oil pressure instead of the temperature, I can flip a switch. It'll display what I want it to display. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, and it hugs the corner so well. This is such a fun car. That being said, they are going after a younger crowd with this, and I think they'll get it. But the drawbacks to catering to that is uh, when you put a heavy engine back in the back, there are some structural things that must be done, especially when you remove the roof, because let's face it, all Corvettes, convertible or coupe, uh, have a removable roof. The coupe has a removable target top, so there's no roof rigidity on any C8 Corvette and to keep the flex down without just going overboard with the side sills that you would have to climb over to get in and out of like any other mid-engine supercar Chevy reinforced the center tunnel here and there's just been a lot of controversy about this entire center tunnel uh, most notably right here Every single C8 Corvette is an automatic. It, it's, it's faster in the car than it looks like it should be on paper. Oh, yeah. You know, mid 200s, mid uh, horsepower, mid 300 foot pounds of torque, four speed transmission. Only three of those are really drive gears. The last one's an overdrive. Right. It's heavy, like 37, 50 ish yeah. without butts and seats. Which I. That blew me away. We had to look at the door sticker to see that earlier. And I, I think they made it with uh, steel I-beams and, <laughs> and railroad trusses to put this thing together. There's room enough in this tunnel for an I-beam. Yeah, there is. The transmission tunnel, I mean, you have to almost sit with your legs crossed to get in there. <laughs> this center tunnel is completely reinforced. It is the backbone and the lifeblood of how they made this mid-engine Corvette work and not flex on you and still make it easy to get in and out of. So this is a solid tunnel without any spot for them to run the linkages for the manual transmission. So huge downside there. 
Uh, another bit of controversy is this row of climate control buttons uh, that separates passenger from driver. I can say from just getting in this and driving it, it it's actually more user friendly than you would think. There's no need to go out and spend, you know, 15, 20 on one of these cars. You can get 110. Well, and that's, that's really kind of the hitch for me between this and that blue beast that keeps following us. What's the sticker uh, on that thing right now? It's listed right now at $127,000. And bought, that's used. And if you bought the same car brand new when it first came out, it would have been the uh, mid to upper 80s, correct? Yeah. So they've gone way up in price, even being used, even having miles on it. Whereas this, I mean, no, you're not getting the same kind of power. You're not getting the same kind of output as you are in that. But this, if something were to happen to this, you're not gonna break the bank to fix it. Right. And it's just so much fun. <laughs> Start up top with all the driver uh, controls and functions, heated and cooled seats, uh, driver temperature on the dual zone. You get down here to the uh, global controls with uh, direction flow of the air and the fan speed. And then you get into passenger controls where the passenger can actually see them. and it's not all that bad. Yes, it does kind of separate you from the person in the passenger seat, but uh, part of the fun of this vehicle is just getting in and driving it. It's simple, it's straightforward. This one has 53 and a half thousand miles. Wow. So for an 88, this is low mileage. Oh yeah, 33 years old. This car's a year older than me, and it's only got 53,000 miles on it. Yeah. It's incredible. What do you think about the C8? Ha, uh, you know, Disre it, disregard the inflated price. Let's just talk about just the car just itself. The, the car itself. Don't worry about pricing because that's it. Looks spectacular. Mm -hmm. um, it, it all the angles and all the curves and all the right places. Um, it, it is supercar esque for sure. Um, to the point where it looks a little bit like a Ferrari, but. Right. Drive modes not only change up your dash, but they do change up your suspension tuning. They uh, change up your automatic shift points, which to be fair, with the automatic transmission, you do get manual shift paddles and they are excellent. They are actually metal and <laughs> GM did not go cheap uh, on anything here in the interior. And it shows, this has the complete leather wrapped interior and it is gorgeous. It's got the matching blue to the exterior, and I am a sucker for navy blue. If you can't tell, Apple Watch, uh, <laughs> my phone, everything is navy blue. So having navy blue contrasting with this uh, rapid blue that goes all over the inside and the outside. Look, you even get blue seat belts. They thought of everything in this. They did not cheap out, and it is absolutely spectacular. If it looks like metal, it's metal. If it looks like leather, it's leather. This is not only a premium ca sports car, it is a premium car. What do you think about the engine placement? I'm totally okay with it. Mm -hmm. um, I think, well, there was argument about whether or not the C7 would go mid-engine, and they kept it in the front for one more year. And GM admitted that the engineers were at the point where, look, if we want to make this car faster, we're gonna have to change up the way that it is built. Mm -hmm. And so, and they've done it. I mean, the outgoing car, the Z06, had almost 700 horsepower uh, in the C7. This one's got just under 500, and it runs circles around it because of how well it's planted, how well it puts the power down. Um, it, it, mind boggling how well that car handles. All right, so Matt is in a Corvette that is literally as old as him, and I'm sure he's in there talking about how it is the pinnacle of simplicity. And there's a lot to be said about simplicity, but there's a lot to be said about modern tech. You know, I am the techie of the two of us, and the C8 Corvette has it in spades. Uh, starting first with the suspension in this, not only does it adjust based on your drive modes, but uh, this actually, because it is so low and has that chin splitter up front that you don't want to damage, it actually has a speed bump memory built into it. That's right, speed bump memory settings. 
you've heard of memory seats. This remembers where speed bumps and obstacles are. And what that speed bump memory does is it allows you to store up to 1,000 different locations in the GPS that will remember exactly where the front of the car needs to lift in order to not scrape. That reminder in the back of your head still, though, is that price tag. Like, yes. it is a spectacular car, but you're going to pay for it to get one. If if sticker price hadn't have gotten so inflamed, I felt like that was going to take the GTR's spot as the sub $1,000 daily driver oh, yeah. affordable supercar. Oh, I agree if completely. If the market yeah. was where it should be versus where it is right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think that thing, well, it was selling like hotcakes until they stopped making them. Right. Whether it was, it was a combination of chip shortage and other parts sourcing for General Motors. Yeah. In particular. Uh, the camera modes in this are ridiculous. Uh, yes, it has bird's eye, top down, 360, all of that. Uh, but again, to keep you from damaging that front chin spoiler, You've got a top-down nose camera. You've got uh, all kinds of additional camera views to help you see in a vehicle that, let's be honest, um, doesn't have the best sight lines, but it also doesn't have the worst. Yeah, that thing is spectacular. And I'm sure y'all can <laughs> see it on camera. The blue, blue is the color to get. Oh yeah. And the Z51 pack, if you're gonna pay today's money for it, that's the way to get, go. Get the Z51 pack. Oh yeah. I can only see the arches over the wheels, but I can't tell you where the true nose of this car is. And that's what these cameras help you remember as you are living with it day to day. And that's the beauty of this car is that it truly is a daily livable supercar or even hypercar and Chevy's not done yet. So they have the Z06 version coming out uh, later this month that uh, will have a flat, flat plane crank V8 that sounds unlike anything Chevrolet has made before. Uh, but given what they were able to do with this engine, this transmission and this platform in base uh, configuration, I'm just blown away by what the engineers are able to do and cannot wait to see what that Z06 is capable of. Oh, no, he didn't. All right, gearheads. So this thing is as close to an American supercar as I think we will ever get uh, from a proper manufacturer. Yes, we've got one-offs, we've got Celines, we've got stuff like that. But from a mainstream manufacturer, this is a gorgeous example from Chevrolet. Uh, as this one sits, uh, it is the 3LT with a Z51 sport package on it. Uh, it's rapid blue, which I love, matching interior with the blue seat belts and contrasting leather interior. This is exactly how I would have spec'd it, shy of one major flaw. This is the convertible. So I'm gonna hop in, fire it up, put the top up and show you exactly why this is not the one I would purchase. That V8 just sounds so amazing back there behind you. You want to be able to see it, right? And with the convertible, that's sadly never an option. I'm going to put the top up 
and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So while this does come with the comfort and convenience of being able to quickly and automatically put a top on your Corvette, I'm probably gonna stip, stick with the coupe because you don't get any more open air feeling in the coupe with the target top removed than you do in a convertible with the top down. And with the coupe, you get that gorgeous display case back behind you that shows off your 6.2 liter V8. All right, Matt, you have claimed that General Motors doesn't make anything fun anymore. I beg to differ. Well, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I will claim that this is fun, okay? Yes. But this is the last of a dying breed. I hope with everything that is within me <laughs> That you are wrong. Yeah, I know. Talked a little bit on my solo drive about how Chevrolet has been slowly abandoning Corvette traditions from the pop up up and down headlights to the round tail lights yep. to the V8 in the front yep. to the round steering wheel yeah. to even possibly the V8 altogether. Uh, we know as gearheads, just how good that is. Oh my. The problem is the general has claimed that by 2035, they will be completely EV. Yeah. Which is a problem it's, yeah. for this car. It's less than 15 years. Yeah. Um, where does that leave the future of the Corvette? I don't know. I don't either. You and I have driven an EV that was extremely fun for both of us. Oh yeah. In fact, the more time you spent in it, the more you loved it as well. I, I did. So you and I both acknowledge that it is possible. It's, it's doable. The problem is you still miss that visceral feeling of the noise, the wind. Yes. It, it, it's a total package thing, and yes. and that will be my argument against EVs forever. It, it's just not the same thing. Absolutely not. And uh, yeah, the visceral reaction that comes with hearing the growl of the V8 in the case of this vehicle behind you. Yeah. Uh, which, granted, the exhaust. It's always been back behind you. Yeah. But hearing everything oh, it's, come from back there is yeah. it's a ridiculous. Whole different, a whole different ball game. You ready for one more? Let's do it. Okay. Let me twist your arm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it is so good! <laughs> I love it. I love everything about it. Uh, I have made mention multiple times uh, maybe off camera, so let's get this on camera. Aside from the convertible top, yeah, this is exactly how I would spec it. Yeah, the downside with the convertible is not the open air. I love the open air, right? But you don't get much more than the target top allows you on the coupe. What it takes away from you is the visuals of that 6.2 liter V8 and its glass display case back behind you. Right. Which cannot be ignored. No, it cannot. Yep. Porsche did that with a, a 911 convertible not too long ago, and that was the biggest complaint with it as well. We know how great Porsches drive. Right. And I would argue this is not far from it, although I haven't personally experienced a Porsche. Uh, from what I've heard from others, this is on par. Um, I want to see the engine. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when, to your point, it's perhaps the last of a dying breed. Uh, so it hurts my feelings. If you really want to see the V8 engine, get the coupe, take the top off manually, yeah. which can be done. It can be stored in the trunk 
which there are two of. There's a trunk and a frunk. Right, right. And uh, truly enjoy this car the way it's meant to be enjoyed. Or you could buy one that's 30 plus years old and just <laughs> pop the fiberglass out of the way and look, there it is. Yes, yes. So with that being said, uh, do us a favor, hit the subscribe <laughs> button down below uh, so that you don't miss a future video from us and ring the bell so you get notified every time we post. Be sure to leave a comment down below as well and tell us how wrong we are about all things EV or all, or all things Corvette, whether it's the C4 or this craziness that's in here. Find more behind the scenes stuff on Facebook and Instagram, both at GT Garage Talk. And until next time, bye. You ready for one more? Let's do it. Okay. Let me twist your arm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it is so good! <laughs>